Hey guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. I am going to be showing you how to read in uh, tenor clef. And if you can see it, it looks like this. Not very pretty. I'm kind of messy when it comes to this stuff. This video shouldn't take too long. It's actually quite simple to read in tenor clef if you know a few tricks. I did receive this question over Instagram. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, uh, you should. The link is in the description below and I release daily music video clips. So yeah, it's pretty fun. Okay, this first note is C. And then of course we go through the alphabet. So we go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And then for some reason, I thought I needed to add an extra note, which but that's fine, we can keep going. And we'll go to um, the ledger lines, because that's that's always good to know. C, D, and E, F, G, A, and I just, we need to end on C, because that's going to bother me. So here is B, and then C. Okay. On the cello, if you are going to play this, let me show you this really cool trick. All you have to do is... Pretend like you're reading this note in bass clef, which on the cello, this note in bass clef would be F. It would be F fourth finger on the C string. If this became bass clef, then it would be finger four on the C string, open G, A, and etc. If I want to read tenor clef, and if I want to read it quickly, what I do is I pretend that I pretend to read it in bass clef but I push it over a string. On the cello, you have your four strings. So if we're looking straight at the cello this way, this is going to be A string, this is going to be the D string, this is going to be the G string, and this is going to be the C string. So basically what I'm saying is that if we read tenor clef as though it were in bass clef, it would be fourth finger. Now to transpose, so that we are actually playing the note in tenor clef, we're going to move it over a string. So we're actually going to play it right here, fourth finger on the G string. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Um, so basically, okay, one more time I'm going to explain it. What I do when I'm reading tenor clef, I look at the first note, I pretend that it's bass clef, but then I play it one string over. And so this note would actually be this note in bass clef. So really all it is, you count from here, you count this note, one, two, three, four, five. So you're moving it up a fifth. So every time you see this note in tenor clef, move it up a fifth and read it as C. So this note is C. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, draw the same notes in bass clef. Really hope this is making sense. It's kind of hard to explain. Probably not doing a very good job with this. Sorry. Um, and we are not going to be able to do this entire thing because we would be using way too many ledger lines. So we're going to go ahead and stop at well, I guess we can stop at A. Okay. So, these notes are exactly the same. This one is just in bass clef. Okay. So let me make sure that you can see this. So here we have C, same note. D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and A. Okay. So, because these are the same notes between bass clef and tenor clef, the fingerings are going to be exactly the same. So it's just going to be four, open, one, two, four, open, one, two, four, and then in fourth position here, we're going to have one, two, four, and then usually you would just play that with harmonic. Hopefully this makes sense. Those are the exact same notes, no matter what clef, um, same notes, tenor clef, B, 
bass clef, but they're all the same notes. Okay, so I'm going to give you a real example. I'm going to take it from Brahms 4, Movement 2. This is a very common excerpt for orchestral auditions and chair tests, all of that. And I'm going to be using this measure as an example. And uh, it goes over um, to this measure. And so I'm just going to be using those two. So let me draw that out. <clears throat> draw that out. Huh. Write it out. So let's go ahead and figure out the notes first. Um, if we were reading this in bass clef, it would be an E, finger one on the D string. Since we want to know what it is in tenor clef, we're going to keep thinking in bass clef until we finish going up a fifth. So still thinking in bass clef, we're going to go E, one, two on the line, three on the space, four on the other line, and five. So we're just going up um, five steps. So. Um, what is, I'm just going to draw a little ghost note, what is that note in bass clef? That note would be a B. And so now that we've figured out a fifth above this note, we're going to stop thinking in bass clef and this note is what we want in tenor clef. And so then this note in tenor clef is a B. And that is going to be finger one on the A string for those of you who are cellists. Okay, this note right here would be an F in bass clef, so we're going to transpose it up a fifth. One, two, three, four, five, which is um, a C in bass clef. And so this note in tenor clef is a C. Now from here, we can figure it out in terms of intervals. So from here to here, B to C, that's one step. Oh, and I'm sorry, please forgive me for this. Um, this is actually a C sharp because of course we always need to check the key signature. Um, okay, yeah, I'm not missing anything. Okay, so from here, this is um, a D sharp, right? Because one step up from here to here, C to D, C to D sharp. Um, um, so let's see, the fingering. For cello, that's going to be finger two. You may totally disagree with this fingering. Um, I used it for my audition, apparently. I'm seeing it drawn in the, in the original, so I'm just going to go ahead and show you what I did. Yeah, you have to extend. Um, so this is extended to, if you're going from one B to extend on C sharp, and then from here I kind of did a little shift slash extend to finger three on D sharp, and then I put four on this note, which is E. Then we go back, of course the sharp always carries through the measure, and so this is a D sharp as well. And we're still gonna keep it on finger three. And I guess I really don't need to have the extension mark there. It's really not necessary because it's more of a shift anyway. So forget the extension mark. And we're going back to extended finger two, which of course this note is the exact same as this note. And so it is C sharp. This note, same note as that note. So B and I did finger four on the D string in like third, third position. Yeah, we could figure it out by the interval, you know, it's a third, so that's one way. But let's just go ahead and do this process one more time. This note in bass clef is C, with the key signature, it's going to be C sharp. And so C sharp going up, one, two, three, four, oh, I'm sorry, one, two, three, four, five. That would be a G sharp in bass clef. So this note in tenor clef is a G sharp. G sharp. This is just finger one, and then this would be finger three, um, because it is an A sharp. Again, we're going by stepwise motion, so it's very simple to figure out. Just going from G sharp to A sharp. One last note, guys. One last note. I actually completed this video and then realized that my camera had run out of space, so I am having to start over again. Um, we were on this note, which is B in bass clef. So if we move it up five steps, one, two, three, four, five, which is F sharp in bass clef. Put a ghost note here. So it is F sharp in tenor clef. So F sharp here and I am a finger two. Yeah, okay. And then here is um, the bass clef equivalent. So B, finger one, extend two, C sharp. D sharp, finger three, four on E, D sharp, finger three, um, C sharp, 
Yeah, extended finger two, four, B, G sharp, G sharp, A sharp, A sharp, four, one, three, F sharp, finger two. Or you could do finger three, though it doesn't matter. I think I had finger two written in just for the sake of vibrato. I feel like you get a better vibrato sound with that. So let me go ahead and show you this up close so that way you can pause the screen on this and really understand. Basically, this is what you look at on the music. This is what they give you. And this is what you would play on the cello, if that makes sense. So this is what you're seeing. This is, this is what you're playing. Um, yeah, and eventually it really just becomes like another language. You get used to it, your brain understands it, it's able to easily translate it. So it might seem a little bit intimidating at first to really understand all this, but if you give yourself enough time and just keep practicing by just sight reading a bunch of tenor clef music, um, I have no doubt that you can get it. So once again, let me go ahead and show you the, um, the scale. This is just kind of really all you need to know. Um, these, all of these notes in tenor clef are the exact notes that I have here in bass clef. I have note names for you. It should hopefully be clear. So yeah, I hope this helps you guys and that it's nice and clear. And yeah, let me know if you have any further questions in the comment section below. Hope this video helped.